So like you mentioned, in the early 2000s, you start making these movies based on video games, House of the Dead, Alone in the Dark, Blood Rain. And these movies are not very popular with the critics. I believe Alone in the Dark was called one of the worst movies of all time, which is in and on itself a completely absurd statement. What do you think? Do you think hap what happened was that because one of your movies got a really bad review from the get-go, then people just couldn't wait to tear up the next one in the same manner? And it was just kind of a snowball type of reaction. You know, like in high school, if you start off with a really bad grade, then you're always a D student in the teacher's eyes. Yeah, and exactly that happened to me, 100%. I think the films from before, after Sanctimony, I did Blackwoods, then I did Heart of America, what is a very good film, actually. And uh, then I did House of the Dead. But the House of the Dead was the first film with a theatrical release. The first film what was in U.S. in I thousands see. of movie theaters. And that means all the reviewers watched it. So that was the first film from Uwe Ball they ever recognized. And they hated it. But I mean, I'm not really expected from a zombie movie based on a video game that I get like in the New York Times, <laughs> an article that I'm the new Martin Scorsese. <laughs> so I was not expecting right, hate right. reviews, but I was also not expecting so much hate, you know? And yeah. they treated me from the beginning on like a total outsider in Hollywood and a total like, uh, like an enemy. The German Nazi enemy. I don't know, but they really, they really, uh, <laughs> I don't know, but, but they really treated me like this. And and then because I kept doing that video game based films, they completely lost the shit on me. I mean, you cannot say it different. You know, it's always funny when the last four or five years when people discuss with me, oh, they hate. You know, they're getting canceled. Whatever. I said, look, all of this is all my career. So nobody can cancel Uwe Ball because I got canceled 2002 with House of the Dead and it never stopped. So it's it's like it's like a kind of at one point you just give a shit, right? You cannot handle it anymore. Uh, it makes you only mad and you also, I had to focus on making films. So, um, but it was really like exactly how you said. It's like the teacher who had a bad opinion about you who thinks you cannot really pull it off, will not see a film when you actually pulled it off, right? So they, they overlooked later, I think, all my good films because they didn't have theatrical releases anymore. So they stopped watching my films after In the Name of the King, you know, and then they didn't recognize whatever, Rampage, Darfur, or South of Wall Street, you know, like films, they are like plainly good, like, and some are actually, I think, really good. And that is the thing. And, and that is the, that, that is the problem. If you do like take Paul Thomas Anderson or Terrence Malick or get people like this, they did the first film and it was a mega success with the, with the critics. So they getting a lot of credits moving forward. You know, they're getting not so harshly bashed, whatever, as somebody who starts on the wrong foot with them. So, and I think that is, uh, uh, it's sad because it, it rigs the system a little uh, in a disadvantage for people that maybe have a slow start or they maybe have uh, the wrong films to start with, you know. So, um, mm, and yeah, yeah so that, that is, I think, just... Um, how it how it played out, but without all that video game based films, I wouldn't had a career. I mean, I wouldn't. I would made a few films and would maybe do now German daily soaps. I don't know. So I really. <laughs> how do you assess? How do you assess that period of your filmmaking, like films such I mean, as House, is, House of the Dead, Alone in the Dark, Blood Rain? Etc. No, I mean they are they are like what well, I think what what the video gamers hated in my case was that they didn't uh, saw me as the total freak in you know that they know I was not totally into video games myself and was not we were not was not playing uh, eight hours a day video games so that is where the gamers hate you already because you're not one of them in a way you know I'm not a fanboy of uh, you know like I know there are some great games and. Um, but also video game based movies at that time were like nothing. They were not like comic book films. They, they always got Superman, Batman, whatever. Like they were already big films, big franchises, but 
video games, what was done before me, like Wing Commander, uh, you know, like uh, Street Fighter, some smaller kind of low budget films at that point. And, uh, and then I was the first guy coming in and do like strategically film after film after film based on video games. They were like, what the fuck? Like what's, what, what is happening here? And, and, and as you see, the studios reacted in a way because then the bigger studio films came, Prince of Serbia, World of Warcraft, they all came, uh, in a way after me, Resident Evil. So, um, and I, I don't think that films were great, but I don't think that films were, uh, horrible and or, or really bad films you know like if you watch blood right now i think it holds very much up and it's more gory as most of the other uh, films done like on based on video games alone in the dark cgi looks good the actors tara reed was not so good and uh it's just a simple genre uh film right you know, with a lot of action. Kind of fun, fun, entertaining flicks yes, that are deviating from the source material of the video games, which people resented, especially gamers. And I think, I think video, I think House of the Dead was actually, I mean, it was cheesy on purpose, but it had some unbelievable shots. It had some like the Matrix rig uh, set up with like turntable cameras. We had like crazy action scenes in, in House of the Dead. And I think they still work very well, you know. And when you when you also see it now, look at the last five six years. How many films totally bombed in the movie theaters? Like hundreds and hundreds of films made no box office. And yeah. House of the Dead did eleven million in the U.S. And they're like, oh, what a disaster, you know. And uh, I mean, look at the numbers now. That would be not a disaster. That would be actually a very solid box office for a $7 million zombie film, you know? And they all counted like Alone is Dark did 5.9 million in the US. And they're also like, what a disaster. Yeah, okay, that was way less as we wanted, of course. But also in comparison to today's time, so what, you know, all that films made 10, 20 million in DVD sales. So, I mean, they were very strong on DVD. Blood Rain was one of the strongest titles in Germany of all times, you know. And uh, In the Name of the King with Jason Stessem sold also around the globe, like millions and millions of DVDs. So it's always when they, a lot of the film critics, I think, also have no clue from the actually, the, like the revenue business. Like what comes back if you make a film and from what sources. And the reality is, theater revenues are barely covering the cost to put a film in the theater. Like, uh, it, you know, like, so th last year you can say only Barbie Oppenheimer, Mario Brothers, uh, Super Mario and uh, Avatar made any money. Everything else lost money because they spent more to releases, release it as, the, as money came in. You know, I think also some reviewers are not aware that the movie theater are getting half of the revenues. When they say, oh, the film made $100 million box office, okay, means $50 million back to the studio. So, and not $100 million back to the studio. And the, the profit margins are way higher in the DVD uh, market and, and uh, rental market also. That is all gone now because of the streamers, but it's very, very bad for the industry. But... Uh, we made, in the beginning, we sold, I think they sold to retail for like 10.99 DVDs and retail sold it for 14.99. So it was 10 bucks per DVD and it was only a $1 to make that DVD. So there was the money. If you sell a million DVDs, you, you have $9 million like back. And I mean, that was the money in the whole film industry. And, and I think that is now in a devastating, disastrous situation with the streamers because the streamers only pay money based on you have superstars, whatever, you know, like, like they, or you produce something for the streamer. But if you sell a film to the streamers, you cannot make nearly, like you cannot even make 10% of what you made with DVDs and Blu-rays uh, 10 years ago. Uwe, I have to ask you this. How did you develop such thick skin if 
the critics were as vicious with me as they were with you, I would have cried myself to sleep. I would cry in, into my pillow every night going to bed. And I would also leave the filmmaking industry faster than you can say biscuit. Were you always that way? I see it more like this. When I grew up, I, I grew up with not a lot of money and I always had to like save money and work for it for a university, whatever. I worked at the chemical industry uh, by a Leverkusen where my father worked. I worked at Mannesmann in the steel industry to, to make money. So I know what hard work means. And uh, for me, it was always a pleasure that I made it, that I actually make films coming from the little shit town by Leverkusen, you know, and you think like, okay, I cannot now get all like crying and whiny because critics don't hate me. What is if critics would love me, but I would never make a film again? So what would I pick? You know, then I picked like they all hate me, but I can't keep making films. So, and I think that helped me. You know, it was not that it didn't have an effect. Of course it has an effect, but it's also this kind of way you think, no, uh, I don't let, myself getting so down you know like so like pushed down and believe in the end i'm a total loser um that that didn't succeed it basically right but of course you're happy about any half ass positive review you know where people mm. uh, say oh actually i like that film whatever it's uh, it's of course uh Dogs barking again. I think now a package comes, DHL package or whatever. So no problem. Yeah, yeah. and and uh, I hope my wife opens the door. But uh, uh, I think that is the thing. You know, it's this kind of like um, if you remind yourself where you come from, then you it's easier to handle things like this because you feel already in a way blessed, right? You feel like wow, I'm actually making films here. I'm on set with Christian Slater, you know, and, uh, <laughs> and, yeah. and uh, you never you never thought about that, that that would actually happen um, on this scale. Uh, so, and that made me happy. Oi, thank you for listening to the episode. If you've enjoyed it, please subscribe and follow on YouTube, Apple Podcasts, and Spotify. As always, eternal glory and gratitude to my producers who are supporting this show on Patreon, the kings and queens, Gordon, Yurechuk, Lorenzo, Veronica, Mila, Carmen, and Taichi. Without you, this pot would not have been possible at all. If you'd like to become a certified Tovarish or Tovarishica of the show too, head to Patreon, find Smart Cookies podcast on there and uh, become one. It's as simple as that. Thank you.